All right, so let's just get started, okay? Cool. So, welcome to another episode of 40 and Fit. My name is John Baruch. Once again, I'll be the, uh, the leader of this ship. Uh, to my right, we have our boy Dave Kalari. I'm um, to your left, goddamn it. Damn it, to my <laughs> I am so bad at this. Time. Every time. <laughs> to his left. I an example of, of a show, and you did it that then, too. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's just, it happens. You know, I, I, I screw it up. I'm tired. We shouldn't do this on Friday nights. I'm exhausted right now. And to his left is the man with the plan, not really, Mike Hoban. Uh, Cheryl, you remember Mike distinctly or very well, or no? Mike's the guy with the beard. Yeah, how do I know Mike? I used to work with you in New York Sports Club, Hoboken. Let me see your face. Well, I can't even see you. Where, where's the camera? Camera's up there. Camera's up there? Oh, that's where you've seen it from? We worked together, New York Sports Club in Hoboken. I don't remember you. I'm sorry. Yeah, it was, um, I was the one who used to take everyone rock climbing. Oh, okay, okay. Maybe you worked with him, so just you didn't work with his beard. Maybe that's yeah. Right. No. He, maybe he didn't have the beard. You didn't have the beard. I was clean like shaven and I had short hair at that point. I really think wow. it's the beard that's throwing me off. Yeah, I had <laughs> I mean, very, I had short hair and no beard. Yeah. Oh man, he, he's he's awesome. still he's friends with Mike Mikey. Oh really? That's why. <laughs> oh, we went we went with you rock climbing. Correct? Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, okay. yeah yeah yeah. And then I remember now I remember. <laughs> yeah. Think about that, Cheryl. That was what two decades ago. Oh, it was definitely more than. It was definitely two decades ago. Oh no, it was. It was we were all in our twenties. We're in our twenties. So, yeah. For sure. Yeah. I mean, I, I, yeah. Let's not talk about how long ago it was. <laughs> but listen, that's that's the point of this podcast, right? It's it's to recognize, realize, and, and just kind of address the changes that we've gone through in the last. Literally, for us, it's always been the last twenty years, right? That's just a big uh-huh. thing for all of us going through this whole thing. Um, and to be honest, originally we were, I wasn't really keen on bringing any females onto this yet. Uh, just because I, I, it was, it was kind of a weird thing where I wanted to just explore things from the male point of view, the whole midlife crisis situation. Um, and when I, when it got to a point where, well, not even got to a point, there was an idea just to have, people wanted to bring other females on. I was like, well, the first person female I would want to have on should be someone of the fitness industry that I'm not personally connected to, right? Not, not that we're not personally connected, but, you know, my significant other wanted to be on also, but I'm just like, listen, I don't want to go there yet. I don't, I don't right. want to bring personal stuff into this just yet. For sure. Right. So sure. the whole thing is for me to vent, and the reason was to ask about midlife crisis, right? right. And so the first question that, that, you know, I want to reach, well, first of all, You've been doing yoga for how long at this point? Oh my God. At a fitness um, professional. Are we still certified as a trainer also? Have her give us some background on her. Yeah, yeah. Why don't you uh, introduce you tell... yourself to our crowd, Shirley? Yeah, your name. Yeah, are we I'm... still, are we going bar, bar, by Barbosa, Barbosa or her? Yes. Oh, we're back. Nice. Absolutely. <laughs> when, you, when you sent me the link for this, I saw that my name was still Shirley Beal on it, and that's why it took me a minute to punch the computer because I had to erase. Like I was like, oh my god, I'm just every time I see that name, no, yes, I'm Barbosa. For Understood. Sure. When we post this, it's gonna be Shirley Barbosa. Got it. Not a problem. <laughs> Yeah, I'm still certified as a yoga teacher. I've been teaching adults. I've been, I was teaching kids for a long time, too. That's also yoga fit. But all those jobs went to hell because I was teaching in schools and teaching after school programs. And now because of COVID, that all went downhill. And I actually have one child client on Zoom, which is a lot of fun. But that's diff- it's, it's not as fun unless I'm not interacting with them. I wrote a book in this midst of a nightmare. I published a book, a kids yoga book. Nice. Good for you. Yeah, yeah. You know what? Send and send it to us and, and we'll re-promote it again. We'll put it on, on the Instagram. We'll, we'll we'll share it. Not a big deal. Thank you so much. I, yeah. I need so what's it called and what's it about? Let's let's go there first. It's called um it's called I'm a little yogi. And it's just basically like um a fun mm-hmm. little um, thing that I wrote for parents and kids to do sun salutations together. So, I mean, it's super cute and it's short. I just did um, a library read for my town and I, I, I um, hosted a kid's class. Well, the library hosted it and invited me to do it. And I'm just trying to get it out there as well. That's um, cool. Yeah, did you draw the pictures yourself? 
No. I mean, I didn't realize until recently that I can actually draw. Ah. But, um, no, I hired somebody to do it for me. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. It's cute. It's really cute. Nice. So, and just trying to make shit work <laughs> and trying not to lose my mind. <laughs> yeah, trust me, <laughs> we've all gone in, in that same direction. And, and some of us, COVID has helped. And some of us, COVID did not help. Let's just put oh. it this way. Did you have COVID too? Let me ask you that. Did no, you get COVID? You. No. no my, my cousin did though. I know a few. Uh, a, I know a couple of people that have had it, and I know of a few that have passed from it. Oh, okay. Yeah. I had it, and you guys didn't have it, right? No. 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 And I know Cliff definitely didn't have it. He's definitely got the shots. Um, it was brutal. Oh my God. How did it affect you? Four days of. Feeling like I was hyperventilating the whole time. I... It, and it, it, but it's weird because four days is actually really short compared to everyone's two weeks that I've seen or I heard of. You know, it was, it was, I really felt like, like someone was like literally pressing on my chest if I laid on my back. That was the worst part. So I had to lay on my side, which then messed up my shoulders and my neck. <laughs> uh, the only time I felt good is if I went for a walk outside. Well, you know, that, that's exactly what I was just thinking, because one of my clients, she's older, she did like the chair yoga, the chair yoga class with me, oh. she got it pretty bad, and now she's still, almost a year later, suffering from like memory lapses and like different stuff that she never had before. I feel like the fact that you are fit and take care of yourself probably helps it just get out of your system. I think, I think it, totally, it totally was proven in itself that everyone that, that took care of themselves a certain way took the right vitamins, vitamin D, zinc, and all that stuff that, that like really jumped on it, um, that, that pays attention to a healthy lifestyle, recovers so much faster. So, yeah. I mean, it's, it, I see it on everyone else that, that had it too. You know, it, it was it's yeah. just weird, so. I believe that for the majority of stuff, um, when we oh. take care of ourselves, I'm like, yeah, exercising, help. like sweating, it just kind of releases all the toxins, and I, you know, I'm no doctor, but. Well, exactly. well, let me ask you, so, so let's go in that little weird direction, like, like you, yes, you're doing yoga, but um, are you still active in like running, because I remember you doing all that uh, back in the day, and you know, actually lifting, or are you just yoga? I remember the marathon. Yeah, yeah remember the marathon, I remember yeah, that. Yeah, I mean, I, the last, I just saw a Facebook memory pop up of two years ago, that's the last time I did, like, I, I did a half marathon. And the, the, like since the divorce, I like I run here and there, but yeah, I'm totally active. I walk every day. I do yoga. I teach. I actually teach low impact hit classes too via Zoom, so that's a lot of fun, and that involves weights. Yeah, I mean, I also I'm a, a little vain. <laughs> I do it more for my mental health, but I also like I'm getting old, so I don't want like I don't want shit to start going south. <laughs> <laughs> I know, so it's not the time to let go of myself. Well, I am technically, well, I'm not single anymore, but that was my whole reason in the beginning, too. <laughs> Listen, yeah. we all still want to look good, too. It doesn't matter. <laughs> yeah, it just helps blow off steam. It really does. Like, you know, after, like, all the stuff that I've been going through, I would wake up sometimes at, like, 3 in the morning and not be able to get myself to sleep. So the days that I exercise or meditate or, you know, I'm able to work with my clients, those days are always better than the days that I sit there and isolate and like, you know, dwell on my- oh, Yeah, yeah, you, you gotta move forward. Like, exactly. Otherwise you, you'll, you'll go crazy thinking about exactly. the same thing. What if I should have done this and all that other garbage mumbo jumbo. But, exactly. But yeah, that's good that you're active in itself. So that's, that's awesome. And thanks Cliff. <laughs> <laughs> he's making weird noises in the back, and I'm just like, can you not do that? Yeah, but he's doing it so we don't go blind I've over here. I've never heard of button fly with so many buttons. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, stupid. Just so you know, Cheryl, there's going to be a lot of weird random banter from these two. They literally have random things to say. That's Throw it back okay. at them. It's Throw it back I'm at totally, them. I'm totally... My, the thing I always tell my kids is if you're willing to shovel out shit, you better be willing to take it. I don't like big babies. I generally get along with guys, so whatever. Yes, yeah, so I remember we actually had this discussion 20 years ago that you have more guy friends than mm -hmm. you had girlfriends. I have a lot of girlfriends, too. I just don't like, I, I got sick of the, the stuff that happens, the catty stuff that happens with females. I got sick of that when I was in high school. I tried to like keep myself out of it. And guys, I mean, guys do it too. I'm not saying you guys are innocent. Oh, no, we're not. 
<laughs> we just hide it differently. <laughs> yeah, we're we're we're, we're, we're pretty stupid. I like as long as as long as I can, as, as long as it's received in a way that could be fun and back and forth without people getting offended, I'm cool with that. Oh yeah, no, totally. It's it's all in good fun here, and it's definitely there's nothing insulting. So we always bring up t certain topics. And we, we try and make sure that it's in light of everything. Uh, everything's all about positivity. Even though, like, I've always said to, to my closest friends and people that, are, that, are, that I'm trying to bring up with me, if I'm not making fun of you, it means that I don't care about you. And if I don't <laughs> care about you, it means don't, you don't belong in my circle. <laughs> right, so right. That, that's just the way like, I am. If you're overly sensitive, totally, I can't deal with that. As soon yeah. as, I, as, soon as that, I get that sense in somebody, I'm just kind of like, okay, now I know that's a boundary. And... <laughs> That's one of the perks of COVID though. Not always, but that's one of the perks of COVID. Like I don't have to be around people that I don't like. <laughs> and COVID is the best excuse. Oh, I can't come. I'm sorry, I can't make it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. COVID. What are they gonna say, right? No, I just can't, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. I get it. My therapist told me that. She's like, it's a perfect excuse. <laughs> so going back to the whole females, you know, you, you being the friends, uh, you having girlfriends, but you being closer with males, Again, the reason we started this was because I asked out loud the question of, is anyone else having the same feelings that I have? And I feel like I'm going through a midlife crisis. I feel like depression or, or just um, regret about certain things, like certain music will just bring back. And I've never heard any females talk about midlife crisis. I've never had, if, I, if, if it's out there, then it, then it is. I just never heard of about course, it. Of course, of course. I so, mean... Go ahead. Yeah, I was just going to, I forget how old you are, if you don't mind me asking. 42. Okay. Don't We're all 42. Me. We're all 42 here. 43. <laughs> he's starting 43. He's 43. I'm 43 now. Yeah. He's, wait, when was your birthday? Uh, a while ago. It was yesterday? No, a while ago. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't know. Yeah, no, no, I didn't tell anyone. It's okay. Wow, why? Because I didn't want you guys singing happy to birthday to me on a podcast. We can still do it now. <laughs> we, we could, but we would be taken away from Shirley's time, and that would be rude. It's okay. We can have Shirley back on the show again. Yeah, you know, after everything we went through today with this thing, we're never going to get this right again. <laughs> Like literally, like he's got a microphone taped to a laptop. <laughs> this is true. We gotta figure this stuff out. But um, That's right. it's makeshift. So but yeah, yeah, we're all we're all we're all in our forties, so. So what was the question? Do females go through midlife crisis? Yeah, it, 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 apparently it's not called midlife crisis because I don't hear anyone talk about it. What's it called? I don't see any ladies driving around. I, I call it. Right, I don't see you guys bu buying cars. No, it's called Louis Vuitton. Oh. No, I mean, I, I think everybody deals with it different. I definitely started having a midlife crisis, and it was even before I turned 40, like around 39, when I started, like... I said 37, I, yeah. Yeah, and, and I even, like, celebrated my 39th birthday because I was like, I don't want to celebrate turning 40. So we did something big for my 39th, and I was That's like... What I said. And, and now I'm 45, for goodness sakes. And yeah, there's definitely midlife crisis. It definitely affected my marriage. Because, you know, it definitely, yeah, for sure, depression, regret, all that stuff. Of course, we're humans. We all go through it. Um, I wasn't, I was never like an over shopper, but I think um, I could definitely be really down on myself. Like, that's why I said it's best for me to keep busy and be working. And I think that's what's part of the depression in my household because I felt like I was doing everything and I wasn't appreciated. And it started like the demise and the trust. And that of course added to the midlife crisis. I, I keep saying, I hope it's over, but I don't know. I've turned the corner and some days are better than others. No, I what mean, did you, how did your midlife crisis affect you? Did you buy? A Louis Vuitton. <laughs> no, I didn't. I didn't buy anything. I was actually in denial that it's a midlife crisis at first. To be honest with you, I was wondering, I, and I, this is one specific example that kind of that hits me a lot of times. So, do you remember the song "The Boy Is Mine" by um, Monica yeah, and, um, of and and Brandy? Right. Of course. Growing up, that was like one of my. I had this huge crush on Monica. I still do. Whatever. But <laughs> whenever that song comes up. And it's still weird to me. It just feels weird in that that was more than 20 years ago, right? I feel like it was just yesterday, but For it was sure. more than 20 years ago. And I'm just like, did I, it's almost like, oh man, did I, did I just miss out on 20 years of my life? Like, where did it all go, right? That um, and or possibly like, oh, 
Damn, I missed my chance with Monica. Like, I've ever got to get a chance with Monica, <laughs> right? But that was also one of those weird things. It's like, man, how come I didn't get a chance with a certain person, right? You kept her on speed dial, though, right? I, I did. I did. <laughs> did. She never picked up. She never picked up. But um, it would also bring, oh, it also comes back that always hits me still is um, is actually weird for me even getting you on the podcast because think about this, right? I say this about Dave all the time. We've known each other for 20 years more than that right but that's what i'm saying just even saying 20 years is weird to me yeah exactly. right it, like i i distinctly remember meeting you for the first time you were working the front desk with me new yeah. york sports club the, opening, uh, we, the opening, opening shift in new york yeah. sports club our blue shirts mm -hmm. right joanne banstra <laughs> um or kim hetzel i remember yeah. Meeting yeah. you specifically that first time and you saying that you're going to become a trainer and, and leaving the front desk. I remember mm -hmm. you, your roommate was Rich Zwickle. You guys went to, to, uh, to get certified <laughs> through AFA. And <laughs> I remember all this stuff. Rich, Zw Rich Zwickle just reached out to me. I was so happy to hear from him. He, I feel terrible. He's going through a divorce too. And I feel like, a I feel like, I mean, the divorce rate is super high and it's a natural thing. I'm not like ashamed of getting a divorce. I think more people get divorced than stay married because it's facts. Yeah, but, um, absolutely. Yeah. And so the guy that I'm dating, when I told him that you reached out to me to do this and he was like, you know, cause I don't, I'm not going to say I don't, have a jealous streak because everybody does. I just don't react to jealousy, but he was jealous. He's like, well, you know, what? Wh what's your history with this guy? Blah, blah. I'm like, me and John were literally <laughs> just friends. Like we would open the club together. We, we were buddies, always. But, you know, I guess people don't believe females and males can be friends. I don't, I'm not in that mindset. I mean, it, it's, when you've gotten hurt before, it's it kind of sticks out, right? If it's happened to you before, or you've seen it, you understand it. You know, it, it's it's just one of those things that that you, it's always gonna be a thought in your head, right? And I get it. We're we're all we all go through it, um, but yeah, even going back to like th that that's when it hit me. Th those are the things that make me realize how how old we are, and not even that we're old. It's just that what what happens in the last twenty years, right? What why didn't we accomplish certain things? And this is like, this is pretty repetitive on this. Did you have goals in the last 10, five to, five to 10 years that you thought you would have accomplished that kind of contributed to this so-called midlife crisis? Um, well, I was running, like I was working and full-time mom, I was doing everything. And my goal was to open a yoga studio off of my home because I had so many clients and I like I ran I ran the yoga program in my neighborhood and I work in in a pretty lucrative Wayne is like pretty expensive and so I wanted to open a yoga studio and that was like one of the main resentments I had with my ex because he was never supported supportive of helping me do anything and that was like one of the things that pissed me off so then um, that was I mean there's more than that but yeah of course I have goals now I. I've always been a hard worker, but it was tough, like doing the balancing of having two children, basically doing everything for everybody. And also I was working part-time. I regret not keeping up with my training certification because that would be an easy thing to go do right now if I kept up with my, with that. Um, and like I said, I want to go to, I want to go to school and teach English as a second language. And I'm in touch with William Patterson right now to figure out how to do the fast track for that because I'm bilingual in Spanish. So, and I have a bachelor's degree. So my goal is basically my goal. And also too, my goals, I've been, um, you know, this is a little private, so I don't want to talk about it too much, but I've nope, been, you don't have uh, to. no, 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 it's fine. I don't care. It's the truth. And I'm used to it. I've been like alienated for my children because my ex is, uh, like poisoned them against me. So right now too, that's, my goal to get into reunification therapy with my kids and return to my relationship with them because they need their mom. No, absolutely. You're always going to be mom. Trust yes. me, I know. I, I understand that part and where I've had to deal with that still too, right? Even like today, I had a little issue again. <laughs> How old like, are your kids? Uh, my, my oldest one is 14 turning 15. I have twins that are 12 and a nine-year-old turning 10. 10 okay. in like literally Two. 13 days. 
So with my 10 year old, it's, it's a little offset because uh, his mom lives in, in, in the Bronx. And it's one of those things where, it, like even today, I dropped him off to his mom's house at six o'clock yesterday morning. I thought she was gonna keep him till the whole weekend until Monday. And then he'll, he'll come back to me. But apparently she just texted me and she's like, are you gonna come pick him up tonight? And I'm just like, I literally just dropped him off to you yesterday. Right. Go be a mom. Like, right. why am I doing all this stuff? Like, do something about that. Like, yeah. why don't you want to spend time with your own kid, right? Like, why why would I ever take that away from you? And it's always, it's, and it's, so it's I still a, go back and forth. It's, 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 it's very unfortunate sorry. because when you fall in love with somebody, you don't talk about, or when you, before you have kids, you don't talk about how you're going to, you know, what are you going to do if they do this or that or the other thing? My therapist has reminded me that kids sometimes break a relationship. And I think that's the case in, in my relationship with my ex because he, he never had my back. He would like, he would take, you know, the kids' sides or like argue with me if I was trying to discipline them or whatever. And it was just infuriating because I was the mom doing everything. And I would always tell him, if you don't just, if you don't agree with something that I'm telling the kids, tell me, but not in front of them because, right. you, you know, and now there's, now they're 15 and 13 and they completely like use that to manipulate the situation even more. Right. Yeah, you know, it is what it is. Well, at the end of the day, you, you know, I firmly believe you're still mom, right? And at sure. one point in their life, they're definitely going to be like, I really want my mom, right? <laughs> I think I, I just believe that. I don't know why. I, I just have this weird gut feeling that no matter what happens, they're always going to be like, especially if you're trying. What's one thing if you don't try to be in their life, then, then they'll be like, yeah, my mom doesn't care. But if you're trying... They, they, they see it. They're going to see it all. I don't care what happens. Yeah. They're going to see that you're trying. That's, so what that everyone, that's what everyone keeps reminding me of. I actually, when I went to the clubhouse to like talk about my job, and I was telling my bosses, they're so good to me, and I was telling them about everything that's been happening. The lady, Marilyn, that I worked for said that when her parents got divorced, she didn't have a relationship with her father for, she said, over four years. And then her father ended up being her best friend. You know, So she said, they'll come back to you. Right now, they're just a little brainwashed and misguided and totally spoiled. So, right. I'm not their friend. I'm their mom. They're, he's their friend. He's like, yeah, sure, yes. Here's thirty dollars. Go to Starbucks. Yes, you can go to this party. My daughter's fifteen, for goodness sakes, and she was in the city recently at what, what's that place? Tao. Oh yeah, Tao. Exactly. Yeah, T A O. She yeah, wow. For, she went there for a sweet sixteen. I found out. One of the fathers, one of these, excuse me, one of these idiot fathers, rented a party bus for a bunch of 16-year-olds and sent his 18-year-old as the chaperone to go to this place in the city. I'm like, what, what kind of, what the <laughs> hell is happening? And why is my daughter going and being a part of this? Because parents I, don't want to be parents. I mentioned it to my ex. We, we communicate on the wizard only. I don't know if you guys know what that is. But um, when I mentioned it to him, he was like, Ed was with them. It was totally fine. And I was like, well, FYI, Ed was not with them because I'm still friends with all my kids' moms and I hear everything. And I'm like, Ed was not with them. There was an 18-year-old chaperoning them. It's bullshit. But yeah. he, you know, as long, like, as long as they're not in his hair, he's cool. Yeah, yeah. Until, until they disagree with him. Yeah. And then, or he disagrees with them and then... Then, then all hell's gonna break loose. Unfortunately, mm -hmm. like that, that's just it's just it's a weird pattern that you see happen uh, yeah. a lot. So, um, well, so in regards to you know what you've been doing, how's fitness been helping you um, cope with all this? Is it, is it still like is it? I know I know you said you want to go back to school for ESL. Um, what is 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 fitness yoga or fitness general? Gen, like you know, all everything else outside of yoga also is it? something that's gonna be prominent in your life still, or, or are you looking oh, to use it for everything? Yeah, I mean, yeah. yeah, I definitely, like like I said, um, I mainly do it for like the stress relief and the, the just the break, that's the whole thing with yoga. And also too, when you get in a zone with whether you're walking or running or biking or whatever it is, you get yourself in that place where you're breathing and you're sweating, you can kind of disengage from all the chatter in your brain and I think that's 
super helpful to me because I do have two sides of myself where I can completely be super brooding and, and very hard on myself. And I know that gets me nowhere. So, and as far as the fitness goes too, I'm so thankful for all the, like the Zoom literally um, has been keeping me afloat. My clients that I've known for years, like just logging on and joining with me. And, you know, it's been a change for all of us, this whole, the whole Zoom thing I was totally resistant to until I had no choice because it got cold. And then, you know, just connecting with people. I go to the gym. I still can't see myself exercising with a mask in the gym. So that's why I'm doing it at home, but I have to work. So I go to crunch and they teach there. Right. Yeah, it's not the easiest thing to do. It definitely isn't the easiest thing to do. You said so. You said something that just kind of segued into my in my head that I wanted to ask about. I say this all the time. I talk to my kids, um, their friends' parents, and I look at them. And I look at the men, right? I don't look at the women. Like, yeah, I just don't. I look at the men, the fathers, and I'm like, wow, why have you fallen off? Like, why do you look like the way you do? I, mean, it's, I know it's kind of weird and insulting. But they're like, they're our age, right? And I'm like, why do you look like you're 20 years older than me, right? Do you find that that happens with the other mothers of, of those kids? And why do you think it happens? Like, how I do think, you keep yourself out of that? How come they can't? You know, I think, I think we all have different vices. And I think the main thing that's abused is food, <laughs> you know, and lack of exercise. I feel like I was over, really overweight as a as a teenager, so starting the habits of exercising, and it all really was in the beginning to lose weight, but starting those habits young, that's why I still have them. I feel like a lot of the females, um, sometimes, you know, they, they're blessed with these great metabolisms and they don't have to do shit. And then all right. of a sudden 40 hits and, and genetics not, doesn't play anymore. Right. Yeah. And also too, then they, and you know, they'll work out, they'll do, you know, they'll do it for like a week or two and then they fall off. I just noticed that a lot. I feel like too, a lot of people eat their feelings and I feel like there's a lot of unhappy marriages. So people then stop giving a shit about what they look like on top of it as well. Thankfully, I mean, I'm not in the best shape, but at least I still can wear the same jeans I wore 20 years ago. So. <laughs> no, that's that's awesome, though. You you know, and, and it's always one of those things where we, 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 we just wonder what are the, the reasons that people keep falling off, right? Why Why is it that us as fitness professionals, why aren't we busier? Let's put it that way, right? Why, why, why? If these people can see, are they, are they everyone's falling off? What is it that we're? Are we doing something wrong that that we're not reaching these people at this point? Like, how do you like? I'll go with the yoga thing, right? For you, how do you get people to even know that your yoga is effective, or or like, and and I, you clearly have success stories, especially if people have been with you for years, right? Do you even get more clients daily, or? I, I monthly, mean, I, like I, I am very blessed that I do. I do have a good clientele that stays with me through all the ups and downs. Like, I mean, uh, but the thing with yoga, the reason that I fell in love with yoga is because it was the first form of exercise that I didn't, it wasn't focused on the end goal of losing weight. Okay. So I feel like that's a thing. I feel like people are just focusing on the scale and losing weight and they don't see results quickly. Then they give up and then that's the cycle. For me, yoga was the first exercise that I had just enjoyed moving. And that then got me into running and all the stuff. And, and I feel like the meditation and the people that come to my classes, it's not just yoga and meditation. I mean, I teach a power yoga class, which is pretty tough and effective. I teach yoga with weights, which is also tough and sweaty and effective. Um, I think it's more about just taking care of yourself and when you're not taking care of yourself, I feel like meditation is huge. And I feel like when you're not, when you're not taking care of yourself, it's harder to get motivated. My one client that had just reached out to me that we started with again, she's one of these, like, she's one of these people. She'll go hard for three weeks to a month. And then she doesn't do anything for six months. So I'm like, <laughs> it's not going to work that way. Right. So, so hopefully she'll stick with it. But you know you can't. We can't control other people. Well, so that, that's one of those things I don't understand. How, how how is it that people can commit themselves and go hard 
for a month, like, how do you not create that habit? Like, I, I don't understand that part um, where all of a sudden you fall off for six months, right? And then all of a sudden you're like, hey, I should start doing this again. I'm like, like, I feel like crap after like missing two weeks and I feel it. Like, I, right. oh, maybe it's because we're old and maybe it's because we're in our 40s. I don't even know. Like, no, I just feel I mean, it now. No, like, it's because you've been, you've been in this for a long time, too. So it's just a part of your brain chemistry. And, and it's part of the the endorphins and everything that you get from the workout is, you know, what you enjoy. So when you don't do it, you know, you're not taking care of yourself. I feel yeah. like shit, too, if I don't do anything. Yeah. Even, even if it's just walking, like, I, I and whatever, it is what it is. I haven't been running, and I don't feel like it right now. And I'm not just, I'm not going to be hard on myself about it. But just because I'm not running anymore doesn't mean I'm not going to do anything. Yeah, yeah. no, no. And I feel also, I mean, obviously, we're not as busy in the fitness industry because of the whole COVID thing. Do you, do, how do you feel about the industry as a whole? I mean, you work at, out of crunch. Um, do you feel like, the big box gyms are are here to stay? Are they gonna grow again? Are we gonna reopen up the right way? Or do you think, it's weird, cause I kind of feel like mind body is is kind of the way to go now. I think that uh, if, if, in business wise, I, f I feel that mind body yoga and meditation is gonna be a key factor and those small studios are pretty much, gonna, I think they're gonna overtake the industry as a whole. And now that this whole Zoom thing is, you know, trainers learn learn very quickly that they can make money without having to pay a house or cut into <laughs> a split with another place exactly, so, so exactly. that's a huge thing you know and, and we're trying to save this industry at the same time but i don't know which which direction is going to go and what do you think um so you know i mentioned ron uh the guy i'm uh, dating he works for cheddar and he keeps you know i keep saying oh my god i gotta get a job job i gotta get a job job because you know you know, well, whatever, because crunch is only a couple times a week. And that's really the only thing that right now is on the books. Um, but my boss, Lexi at crunch, she kicks ass and she motivates people and people go there and I see people doing everything with masks on. So I feel like the trainers that are successful in Zoom are going to continue right now because I went to see my boss. And if we, if we go back to the clubhouse, everybody's going to have to wear masks. Right now, I'm just letting everybody know. I'm making a schedule. I want to continue Zoom classes, but it's also people miss being around other people. Other people, right. You know yeah. what I mean? It's huge, yeah. A sense of community. So, yep. Community, then, right. From but then I have some people, some of my clients that are like, I, even if you go indoors, I'm not going indoors, and they want to continue Zoom. So I guess it's just going to play out. I don't think that gyms are going to... I don't think that gyms are going to close so much because people need, like, it's a one outlet that people rush to as soon as we, as soon as these restrictions are lifted, besides restaurants, of course, but, <laughs> um, yeah, no, I don't think, I don't think the gyms are going to close down. I think, um, but I do think it's, it's a, it's a good opportunity for, for trainers to, to build their own business and, and, you know, make money without having to, like you said, pay a cut to other people. But you, if you think about it, just what you said, the gyms aren't going to close down, but the trainers aren't, have learned they, they could run their own business without giving the gym a cut, right? It's like, well, that's kind of, that's both sides, right? Like, that means the, how do the gyms survive if they don't have the trainers to develop or make that ancillary income for the facility, right? That's yeah, yeah, but I mean, I think you can do a balance of both. I remember when I used to bust my ass at New York Sports Club, and then I was like, why am I here from 6 a.m. until 7 p.m.? Like, And then I was like, I'll be here from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m., and then I would go to people's houses. You can balance it like that, and it's the same thing with Zoom. I just right now, I told you, I'm not getting vaccinated, so I'm not doing in person. I, when I go to the clubhouse, everything is masks and socially distanced, but I have some of my clients that want me to come to their houses and I'm not doing that. I'm, I, you know, this pandemic is not gone yet and I'm not one of these people that want to be careless about it. You don't want to jump on herd immunity? You don't want to be part of it? You want to be part of the crew? <laughs> no. We, I didn't get it either, so it doesn't matter. <laughs> I want to see. I, I want to see what actually happens with this vaccine, with all the people that are rushing to get it. Because I mean, everything's new. I never got the flu vaccine, and I never got the flu. So that's just my two cents. 
No, no, hey, listen, I, I feel the same way. I haven't had the flu shot in, I think it was like 15 years. I've had the flu once in the last 15 years. I, I, don't, I don't even know. Um, so that's, I mean, that's just, the world is changing. The, we don't know when the pandemic is going to end, um, even with the stimulus checks. It's so funny how they're like, I just heard today they're going to give us a fourth stimulus check, and they want to do a monthly stimulus check until the pandemic's over. I go, when do we determine the pandemic is over? Like, Ugh, when there's no one has, when there's no COVID left, what? When the money runs out. Yeah, when yeah. The, but that's just it though. They they don't even print money at this point. It's mm -hmm. literally just it's numbers. Yeah. yeah. I never even qualified for these damn stimulus checks because my ex, his income was too, too much. Too high, wow. And, 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 and uh, the divorce was just finalized in March. And right now I have so much paperwork in front of me that I don't even, I haven't even looked if I qualify for stimulus. <laughs> you might be, you might qualify for that piece, for the payroll because protection as an independent, you might qualify for a payroll protection um, because you are an independent contractor, even though, again, yeah, you might have to claim for next you year. File. Yeah, you might have to file it's your social now. security. Right. Yeah, I got like unemployment for a while. That was that was very helpful, but that ran out too. So right now, like, I have to move to a smaller apartment, and um, I'm just gonna make it work. Like I always have. <laughs> just gonna make nah, it work. To you know? it, totally, totally, it totally makes sense. So wait. Um, because you know, amongst us here, that we have, we have we have pretty good connections, and I know you were reaching out to look for some sort of work. Um, but when are you going to be able to travel to certain places? Because we we do have certain projects, uh, and I it was weird. I just thought about it of of one location that we have a project for that she would actually be perfect for. <laughs> um, if you're willing to get certified again, um, as a personal trainer. Yeah, because we we would. I mean, it's not a hard thing to do. We can actually work it out. It, Something we'll have to do off air. After, to be honest with you, <laughs> I don't want to put make commitments right. on on air right now because so they, they will okay. definitely hear this. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but but there are wait a second, and, and it's not here either. This this is gonna this is something in um, closer to you. Mm -hmm. Where? Tottawa. Okay. Well, that's that's not not here. <laughs> There's several places in Ottawa. Gold okay. City. No, I was just kidding. I'm totally open. I'm totally open. Yeah, yeah. So, so we'll we'll talk about it on, on outside off air. But that's why that's why Ron gets mad at me because I'm like, oh my god, I re like we were driving past Taco Bell the other day, and not to offend anybody that works at Taco Bell, but I'm like, oh look, Taco Bell's hiring. Maybe I should work there, because what? because what I'm doing, although it's been good, thankfully, but it like it, it ebbs and flows. Like some weeks I make two to three hundred dollars more some yeah. weeks like people are all on vacation you know what i mean and it's like it just it fluctuates so that's a little bit stressful and oh, um it's not consistent I, yeah i get it also too like he, when i say i have to get a job job he gets mad at me because i do love the fitness industry i do love this whole i do love all of this i love being a trainer i love working with people i love being a yoga teacher so I guess that's a part of it. I guess I'm at my age. I'm like, shit. Do I have to like? Because my my um, bachelor's is in communications. So I'm like, do, like my my cousin is like, you should get like a real job and go do clerical work or like administrative work. And I'm just kind of like, oh god. Do I have to, do <laughs> no, I when you're to? when you're an active person, you you can't do those positions. Unfortunately, like those. And no knock to them because we do need them in the world, but right, of course, well, no, there's no just no way. That. It's <laughs> like my, you know, my my uh, my friend Jamie actually from New York Sports Club back in the day. We we're still really really tight, and she told she said to me when she she heard me talking like this. She said, "You just got out of a relationship that you hated. Don't go to a job that you hate. Focus on the things that you love doing." And and I was like, I, "What am I going to be a trainer forever?" And she's like, "Yeah, why not?" Yeah, why not, yeah. Mike? Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Trying to get off this damn Ferris wheel, but just keeps pulling me back on. A lot of that comes down to how you feel about the profession mm -hmm. as a whole. Exactly. Yeah. If it's something you can own up to and be like, I'm a tr I'm 50 years old and I'm a trainer and I fucking love it, then that's great. Exactly. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. I think too many people do view this as like a transient career. You know, it's like something, oh, you do for money in your 20s and then you get your real job. Right. I think that's the way a lot of people like look at it, you know. Whereas yeah. you know, it's it can be a very real career. 
For sure, for sure. I mean, when I was in my 20s and I graduated from Ramapo, I was like, oh, I'm going to have a starting position for $30,000 a year. No thanks. And being a <laughs> teenager's horse club. Well, because then I wouldn't be able to live in Bergen County and I would have to move home, which was definitely not an option for me. Um, so that's why I became a trainer. It was very lucrative. And like I said, I made connections with a lot of good people, John included, you guys included. And yeah, if I can continue doing it, I would love to. My, my uh, you know, Ron is a sound guy, like I said, and he's trying to motivate me to build my own website. And because the Zoom classes is pretty cool. Like if I'll record all the classes and if people commit to it and they don't show up, then I'm like, oh, do you want the video? And they'll pay for the video. Or sometimes people are just oh, like, what does that sound like, guy? <laughs> Send me the video. So then I'm like, I, I don't even have to work sometimes and I'm making a couple of bucks, you know, and it all adds up. It's called, it's called so. subscription fees. You could definitely do membership subscription fees. That was only fans. No. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> That's only for you, dude. <laughs> I was, you know, I was, you know, this is going to sound terrible, but I was avoiding doing anything until the divorce was over, like seriously like that, just because. You know, what you have to claim people. and stuff like that, what you're possibly yeah, doing. He exactly. says you have a business all of a sudden. Yeah, been there, exactly. done that. Trust me, I, I've been yeah. told that. But, but for now, like that. I gotta like just keep moving forward. Well, right now, I mean, are you, you're let's go that direction real quick. We don't have a lot of time, but <laughs> Instagram fitness professionals, right? How do you feel about again? We've been in this game for a really long time, we all have our own opinions. Now you have these. Uh, these these pros these sub, these fitness pros on Instagram that aren't even certified right there's no there's, there's no backing behind them how do you feel about those guys that are kind of guys and girls that are kind of taking over the 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 web the internet world about fitness I mean do you do you see them beneficial do you how do you feel about that I mean I don't knock it it's it's the way of the world like even like my client my client Randy who's like 52 is telling me I should make TikTok videos. I'm like, I don't even know what TikTok. <laughs> TikTok. <laughs> I don't even know. <laughs> Doing the dances. Right. He wants you to um, dance. <laughs> what did you say? He wants you to dance on on TikTok. No, it's no, it's Randy, and she's a female, and she's like, she's she's telling me that I should make like yoga videos or whatever on TikTok. And from what I understand, you get like 15 seconds. I'm like, what is that going to do? Right. But she's telling me to drum up my business, like. I follow some of these yoga people on Instagram. I think it's pretty cool, but I also know that they're, they have people, like sometimes you see people holding handstands and they don't, you know, they don't have the top of the position in oh. the shot. And you see people like holding their feet and like the, you, you know, whatever. I just, yeah. That's not attractive to me for me. I like the Zoom classes and I, I am interested in like creating shorter videos that I could like monetize somehow, but. I don't know. I don't know. I'm not. I'm not really into like the TikTok, Instagram stuff. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. So you don't feel like like Instagram is somewhere you're you're gonna go with this? Not like. I mean, I I have. Uh, you know, I go by Yoga Lovey and I advertise my classes, and sometimes I'll I'll take a picture of my classes or myself in a yoga pose or whatever. But I mean, I guess that's the direction I'm gonna have to go in. I'm just a little hesitant. Has it helped you? Has Instagram helped you build the business? Instagram, I mean, yeah, for sure. Instagram and Facebook, that's how I communicate with my clients and I like blast out everything for people like the moms in Wayne, you know, all those websites. Yep, yep. You know, like, and the, the thing about my classes, which is different than others, is that I won't charge more than $10 for a class. And I know people like have different opinions about that, but, and it makes it, you know, I get more people that way. And then people come back and refer people. And that's a decent amount of money to make. If I'm paying 20% rent somewhere and I'm yep. making, if I, you know what I mean? You know how it goes. Oh yeah. Yeah. The, the so. game, you know, there's, that's why there's always a debate on what's the better way about it. Do you, do you just work for a company that'll give you a split? You have to do less work. They have a the captive audience, or do you just build your business, charge what you feel you, you deserve. Um, but then you still have to do all the legwork in order to uh, to market yourself, right? You 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 lose out. There's a lot of give and take that people don't yeah. understand of how the business works. 
is it what's it worth to you to do this stuff that's that's a big thing you know i think that i think that the one positive and i've always had the you know i think that the one positive about always working for some type like some type of business is that you meet people that way also you know what i mean yeah i like doing the legwork i like working for myself for sure i don't like having a boss it's kind of a little bit of a bad attitude that i have but um, no, it's not. It's I an understand entre- it completely. It's, it's, it's an entrepreneurial yeah. mindset. It's an entrepreneurial mindset. It's For not sure. that. But but you know, working at Crunch, I get to know people, and I'm like, oh, if you want to join us on Monday, it's Zoom. Like, you know what I mean? So I just like, I'm, I mean, we where we were in Hoboken a couple of weeks back. And I had a few of these books that I was bringing them to a bookstore that agreed to carry them for me. And I was, and then I saw, I just saw a bunch of cute little kids and I just walked over and I gave them the books and I just said to their parents, if you don't mind like sharing it for me, like I just have, I have no problem being communicated with people. And it's gr- guerrilla marketing. That's all it is. It's guerrilla marketing. <laughs> it's branding and guerrilla marketing. That's all that it is. Um, so, yeah, no. so hopefully I can keep doing this and I don't have to end up working, you know, at a fast food restaurant. Well, I, I definitely think that there's, again, you, you we've connected, um, and this is weird how, again, it all comes full circle. I think that there are certain people in this industry that I, you know, we've tried to do things before. Remember, I tried to get you into the martial arts also. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and tried to get you an orange theory as orange well. Theory, I know. So well, again, you're, you're just, late. but you're just one of those people that I know that if we get you in the right situation, I, I, it's something something good's gonna happen. I think that there is one situation that we could possibly work with you. We'll talk about it offside uh, if okay. I can. I'll call you. But again, I feel like that's one of those things where, um, like I said, you know, I'm trying to do stuff with Dave for 20 years also, and we finally got some stuff going. We have some good stuff. Moving forward, like you can actually see money, <laughs> like That's we great. see money right in front of us, and we're like, and it's good. Uh, and I want to keep the same momentum, and I want to build this team uh, the way we're, we're gonna. And I think we're gonna kill it. I really do believe we could kill this if we just take the right people. And I think it's the seasoned, in my opinion, it's gonna be more of the seasoned trainers, or we have to have trainers that are, are people that are willing to be molded. If you're not willing to be molded, is where that's the problem we have. And I know Dave hates it. Dave would be like, every trainer in the world hates, sucks. <laughs> garbage. 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 Right? And, and it's because we're seasoned. We, we've been doing this for a while. And, but I also and, think, you know, I also think, we, we, you know, we were talking about midlife crisis and regret and yep. all that stuff. But I also feel like we're at an age that, all, like, like you just said, you see, this, you see the possibilities and you're going to go for it now. As opposed to, like, when we were in our 20s or even, like, myself with Orange Theory. For me, the thing about Orange Theory that made me nervous was the corporate part of it. Mm-hmm. And also, too, you know, I was going through a ton of shit. So yeah, that, that, it, was, it was definitely not the right time for you to even get involved with something like that. Right. So. But now, you know, I am, I am slowly seeing the dust settle. And I am, you know, I am starting to believe that, that things are, things are going to get better because my divorce is finalized. And that was really the, the thing that was holding me back a lot. And now I really have no choice. I gotta, I gotta do something. <laughs> well, right, right. But in, in timing's everything, right? And I, I think that that God puts you in the right places at the right time in order for things to 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 um to evolve the right way, the way you're supposed to, right? And I do think that Fortunately. this was a pretty good one for us, also. Um, as you know, we we're kind of almost out of time right now, um, okay. because you know. I, I got to run and I know you got to run, but real quick, Cheryl, tell the people what you got going on, how we could get in contact with you, like where they could find you on, uh, on Instagram, you know, okay. you know, or whatever you want to do, Let promote okay. yourself, what you got going on. Okay, so this, the book, I'm a little yogi, is- I'm going to buy it, I'm going to buy it, really tell me where I can buy it. I was going to say it's, promotional it's on, all the, it's, on, <laughs> it's on all the major, it's on, it's at, it's on Amazon, it's at Barnes and Noble, it's, I'm, I've been walking around to small bookstores and trying to like get it there too, but you can order it online, you can find it online, and I'm in, on Instagram, I'm Yoga Lovey, at Yoga Lovey, and on Shirley Facebook, Barbosa. Shirley Barbosa, and that's where I post all like my yoga classes, um, people can just message me and I can send them the Zoom the Zoom links or the class schedules where I'm working. Do you have specific time frames that you have, you have peak times for people that, that would be, like what are your hot times? Um, the hot, you know what the ones that are the most successful right now are one, uh, Wednesday and Friday, 6 a.m. That I love. And then Tuesday and Thursday I teach um, 
10 a.m. and 11 a.m. And the two gentle classes, one is a chair yoga class and one is just a hatha class. And then one, the other one is a power class. And then the other one's the yoga with weights. Thursday night, I teach yoga with weights. And Wednesday, Monday and Wednesday night at 6.30 p.m., I teach this low impact hit class, which kicks ass. I love it. There's no <laughs> jumping. We like we, we move for a minute, we rest for 30 seconds, and we it's just for the full hour. It's a blast. So that one is also pretty popular. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. Well, um, it, it's come to 8 p.m., we okay. thank you so much, Shirley, for being on. I do believe that there's going to be a couple other things that we have in the works that we could possibly bring you back on. Um, I hit her on the Instagram request. Oh, Instagram request. You got some requests. We're going to throw some requests towards you. We're going to start promoting your stuff too as well, okay? Oh, thank you so much. Not thank a problem. You. We will speak off air real quick. But guys, it's a great day. It was a short one today, but unfortunately, we do have some other stuff going on. Say goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you. Bye.